In the rehearsal simulation and practice rounds, we place an emphasis on tactics. Repositioning a product, buying plants and equipment, raising money, etc. Now we're going to shift our attention to strategy. What's the difference between strategy and tactics? Consider something like building a production facility. The project could take a year. At one level, it is a tactic in a larger scheme that says, we need a new production facility. At another, it has a strategy of its own that ranges from selecting a site to staffing with people. The relationship between strategy and tactics can be confusing at first, but there are a few distinctions we can make. We can say that strategies contain tactics, not the other way around. We can observe that tactics are on a shorter time scale. And we can see that strategies can have many tactics running in parallel or in sequence. To help you think about the long term, we're going to discuss six generic strategies. They are broad cost leader, broad differentiator, niche cost leader, niche differentiator, cost leader with product lifecycle focus, and differentiator with product lifecycle focus. What's the difference between a cost leader and a differentiator? Well, you learned in your economics classes that people tend to trade off price against value. A cost leader emphasizes low prices. First, it cuts costs. Then it passes along some of the savings to customers as a price break. A differentiator emphasizes value. They give the customer whatever it is that the customer wants. Then they raise the price. In any market, we find cost leaders and differentiators. Let me offer an example. Suppose I wanted to buy some toothpaste. Here in Chicago, there's a supermarket drugstore chain called Osco. Osco likes to cut deals with suppliers and offer in-house generic alternatives. You walk up to the toothpaste display, you see Crest toothpaste. Right beside it, you see a little sign that says Osco toothpaste. Compare with Crest. You think to yourself, aha, Osco's cut some sort of deal with Crest. It's Crest in the tube. But are you sure? Crest is a differentiator. They offer toothpaste in 27 varieties of packaging, flavors, and ingredients. Everybody's aware of Crest. They spend a fortune on advertising, and their distribution system is world class. You can find Crest in a gas station. Osco is a cost leader. Their toothpaste is in one size box, and it's an ugly box. They never advertise. You wouldn't be aware of it until you walked into the store, and you can only find Osco toothpaste in an Osco. But Crest is $3.50 and Osco is $2. You think to yourself, is it really Crest in the tube or does it just look and taste like Crest? If you went to Osco headquarters and did a sales comparison of Crest versus the Osco brand, you might discover that from a profit perspective, they produced about the same result. Osco toothpaste has very low costs. They don't have a factory or advertise or spend much on distribution. Osco can pass along those cost savings and still maintain a good margin. Crest, on the other hand, requires a higher price to compensate for its excellent design, high awareness, and easy accessibility. With this distinction in mind, let's have a look at six generic strategies that you can employ in Capstone. Look at your starting position. You have a product in every segment. None of them is attractive in a differentiation sense, nor are they attractive in a cost leadership sense. You are middle of the road, identical with your competitors. Over time, customers want smaller size and higher performance. Over the next eight years, the segments will move from the upper left quadrant to the lower right quadrant. It's easy to draw comparisons with real world industries. You find the same sort of evolution in cell phones, computers, cameras, etc. From a cost standpoint, material costs are cheapest at the trailing edge of the low end segment and highest at the leading edge of the high-end segment. The higher the technology, the more expensive the materials. Differentiators will give their customers a good design. They might add a second product in the segment. Think back to Crest. 27 varieties of the same toothpaste. Differentiators sacrifice cost. They spend heavily on promotion so that everyone knows about their product. They also spend heavily on sales budgets so that everyone finds them easily accessible. A cost leader attacks its material and labor costs and would be stingy with product extenders, promo budgets, and sales budgets. They attack costs first. Differentiators attack design first. 
Let's consider the high end. Customers here place an emphasis on positioning. They want a product at the ideal spot. But the high end segment is moving. No matter how hard you try, your product can only hit the ideal spot once during the year. Knowing this, and knowing that material costs fall as the product trails in the segment, a cost leader would try to have its production on the ideal spot on January 1st. As the year unfolded, the ideal spot would drift away, but its costs would fall. In late December, the cost leader would finish an R&D project that would reposition the product to the ideal spot again. In contrast, a differentiator would put their product in front of the ideal spot on January 1st. As the segment evolved, the ideal spot would slide under the product in July. And in December, they would move the product in front of the ideal spot again. Let's have a look at our generic strategies. You'll find these described in the online team member guide under six basic strategies. A cost leader with product lifecycle focus strategy recognizes that there is a natural product life cycle from high end to traditional to low end. If a high end product just sits still, it will eventually become a low end product. In the real world, you will find this sort of strategy at companies like Intel or Taiwan Semiconductor. The latest greatest chip today will be superseded by a new one, but the older chip will continue to sell at a lower price. In this strategy, the specialty segments, size and performance are sacrificed to allow the company to invent new products. A new product will never move again, although it will be tweaked now and then to manage its age. Since it will not move, the company highly automates the plant on day one. A differentiator might also recognize the product lifecycle, but it would approach it differently. Instead of letting segments slide past the product, they would keep up with the drift rates and invent new products for each segment. For example, automobile manufacturers do this. General Motors has Cadillac, Buick, Chevrolet, there are many tactics that this type of differentiator might employ. For example, they might invent a new high-end product, reposition their original traditional product to low-end, and finally shift their size and performance products into the traditional segment. A broad cost leader keeps a product in every segment, but it tends to emphasize the traditional and low-end segments where customers are more price sensitive. A broad differentiator puts emphasis on high-end, performance, and size, where design is more important. Of course, there are pros and cons to all strategies. For both broad strategies, the pro is that the company can play in all parts of the market. That gives it more potential for sales volume in the long run. On the other hand, it has to spread out some very expensive investments over all five segments. That makes it vulnerable to more focused competitors. Here we have a niche cost leader. It hammers low-end and traditional early hoping to create a barrier to entry, then consolidates its position. Of course, the downside is that it had to give up the high technology part of the market. Finally, we have the niche differentiator. It phases out the low technology and builds a position in high-end performance and size. Of course, there are many other strategies. For example, your company might decide to place an emphasis on performance. You would compete in the high-end, traditional, and performance segments. Or you might decide to emphasize size and play in the size, traditional, and high-end segments. There are an infinite number of combination strategies. The early decision rounds are important because the sooner you begin to implement your strategy, the more difficult you make it for competitors to apply countermeasures. Good luck with your planning.